car dealer banks, and how they are used against you. No matter where you go in the car business, you'll be hearing about amazing finance officers, tons of dealer banks, and how they can do so much to help the car buyer. But is that true? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's stellar video is brought to you by The Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers, and a bevy of auto experts to boot. If you appreciate us working hard to bring you up to speed with our great videos, and you want to support our efforts, well, there's plenty of ways for you to get on board and show us a little appreciation. Start by recommending us to your friends and help us get to that million subscriber mark. Now that would be awesome. Today I have one very significant goal. I hope to impress upon you just how important it is that if you need financing, that you get an approval from your own bank or credit union first. Wow, this is important. Today, we're sharing the story behind the number of banks that dealers work with and why car dealers have so many banking relationships. You've all heard how many banks dealers are working with from every person you talk to at the dealership. We have 40 banks. We have the best banks. We have the best finance officers ever. No doubt you've heard many more. What did your car dealer tell you about their banks? Well, tell us in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear those stories. We've heard a ton of highly fabricated stories about dealer banking options out there and all for a very simple reason. They want you to put your confidence in their finance office. But are these stories true? The answer, well, let's call it more of a half truth. They do have a lot of banking relationships. The lie is that none of those banking relationships are there to help you. Every relationship they have ever developed in banking was done to help them. You see? Now that seems a little bit confusing and it's because of the very idea that many banking relationships create a logical thread that sounds something like this. You need a loan. They have many banking relationships, which gives you more banks to choose from. So you'll have a better interest rate. Let's go back to the first point. It could be true that you need a loan. But number two, is it also true that dealerships have many banking relationships? Well, sure, most do. Now, here's where it starts to get a little bit dicey. Are all those banks to your advantage or are those for the dealer's advantage? Some of you are figuring out where I'm going with this question, aren't you? Well, let's look at the third point I made because of all the banks dealers have, you get more banks to choose from is false. The dealers get more banks to choose from. What's the difference? You're about to find out. Point number four, because the dealer has so many banks, you'll get a better interest rate. Again, that's false. The dealer will get a better offer from one of their many bankers. And what's the difference? You're about to find out. Now, to understand why the statements about more banking options and better rates for the car buyer being false, you have to understand why the dealer has all these banking relationships to begin with. Every lender, including banks not working with car dealers, have their sweet spot of clients and inside the sweet spot is their box. They like clients with a given set of characteristics, certain credit scores, income levels, debt to income ratios, clients with interest in given types of cars, and cars at certain ages with a less than a given number of miles, all of it matters, and it changes from bank to bank and customer to customer. The banks dealers work with are generally indirect lenders, meaning they borrow money through middlemen like a dealer. Can you imagine anything getting cheaper if it has a middleman? No, it doesn't. It's another person getting a cut. Everything is more expensive to the consumer when a middleman gets involved. Let me run through a short list of indirect lenders that car dealers commonly work with. Capital One Auto Finance, Credit Acceptance Corp, Westlake Financial Services, Ally, Wells Fargo Auto Finance, Bridgecrest Acceptance Corp, Santander Consumer Finance, Navy FCU, USAA Federal Savings Bank, American Credit Acceptance, Chase Auto Finance, Lobel Finance, Bank of America, Mechanics Bank. These are just a few. You probably only recognize a few of those names and there's more. Places like CarMax and Carvana even have their own banks, just like GM has GMAC. Now, why does the dealer have all these banks? 
Let's set aside for the moment all the unneeded products and dealer fees that finance officers are well known for and focus just on the financing part. One of the way car dealers are making money is by increasing the interest rate from lenders I mentioned and then pocketing the difference when you don't know better. That's the middleman effect. This is called the finance reserve and many dealers will charge up to two and a half points in additional interest and there have been cases where interest rates increased by as much as eight points. When the law prevented them from doing more, they hit car buyers with big fat bank fees. Some banks allow more finance reserves, so the dealer is looking for an approval from a bank with the greatest flexibility on interest rates that benefits the dealer. This is the bank that you are going to get pitched on. The dealer finance officer does not have to tell you what the finance reserve is, but if you're going to go with their lender, you can ask to see the approval from the bank so you can see what rate you actually qualified for. Most finance officers are not going to want to show you the bank approval, but as long as you got your own financing lined up first, like I said earlier, they won't be able to rip you off with the loan. Now you know that just one reason the dealer has so many banking relationships is to find a bank that will allow them to add the most to the bank's original buy rate on your loan. Fatten the interest rate. You see that? It's to help the dealer, not you. Let's talk about another reason dealers have so many banking relationships. Besides interest rate games, the dealer is looking for the bank that gives them the best offer for the other things they love to make money with, like fees and unneeded products I mentioned earlier. They want a product packing friendly bank. This becomes obvious in the offers the dealer gets back. You see, besides all the other pieces of information a bank sends over when they agree to finance your car loan, they are also telling the dealer what percentage of the cash value of the car they're willing to finance. Is it 120%, 110%? Is it 100, 90, or 80%? The higher the percentage is, the more things they can pack into the loan without having to ask you to come up with more cash down. So, they are on the hunt for the bank that lets the most things slide in your car deal. Here's the funny part. In almost every case that a finance officer tells a car buyer that the bank would like them to come up with a little extra cash, that is almost always a lie. What the finance man is doing is making room in a car loan for more products and fees he wants to add. When a finance officer thinks he can't push the customer to buy more things like warranties on his own, well, he'll tell another lie. He'll claim the bank wants the buyer to have the products he's peddling. Ever hear that sales pitch? The bank wants you to protect your investment? I think a lot of you have. Almost always, it's a lie. Now, I have to say, almost always, but you're pretty safe if you just count on it being a lie. You're getting the picture. But let's summarize why car dealers have so many banks. One, to find a bank that will approve your loan. Two, to then find a number of banks who will approve your car loan to give the dealer more options. Number three, to then sort through the banks to find which one lets them pack the most products and fees into your car loan. And number four, to find a bank that allows them to increase the interest rate to that finance reserve I mentioned earlier. Now you know that all the banks a car dealer has, the amazingly high number of banks they claim to work with, is nothing more than finding a banking partner who will do the most to help them empty your pockets. Make sense? And because they are lining you up with the bank who allows the most fat in the loan, you're also paying higher interest than you ought to as well. See how that works? The banks the dealer likes the most are product packing, fee approving, interest rate padding lenders. Let me go back to my goal in the beginning. Have I convinced you how important it is that if you're financing, that you talk to your own bank or credit union first before you visit the car dealer? Was I successful today? Yes! Yes? Good. My mission here is done. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below, include hashtag the homework guy, and make sure to join us on many of your favorite social media platforms out there. We post updates and share videos on our other social media sites too and answer car buying questions to help you out. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. 
We use your tips to help great people like Maggie. This amazing young lady works with university students to help them get more out of their studies and ultimately more out of their lives. She's a force multiplier. We enthusiastically sponsor Maggie and she thanks you in advance. Just like the Homework Guide team, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip today, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guide team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. You can help us get to a million subscribers. And by doing so, you're helping to defeat the dishonest operators in the car business who are still trying to figure out that good old fairness and honesty is the best business model. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.